Welcome to the episode of the Royce this week. Uh, my name is Evelyn Wanjiru Washira. I'm the director of the Royce. This is where we raise youthful soldiers for Christ. Welcome to the topic of this week. Our topic today is Christian dating and sex. Uh, what is dating? As young people, we keep on asking our sales many questions on this area and we have decided to tackle it this week. There are some, some questions that we have been being asked by many young people whom we have met. Is Number one, they ask, is it wrong to have a boyfriend or a girlfriend? And is it wrong to kiss in a Christian relationship? Which is the right way for a Christian uh, to date? Uh, many, many questions. And another question they normally ask, what does God say about dating and about sex? I want to tackle the last question, the way the Lord will help me, and I believe it will help each and every one of us. A Christian dating, I'll start with dating. What is dating? It's about getting out somewhere, in, a, in, in the two of you, so that you can know one another well, you can understand one another well, uh, and you get to know the lights and the dislikes and maybe better understand this soul that you're trying uh, to bring closer to you. In a Christian dating, we should differentiate it between, uh, with, the, with the world dating. In a Christian dating, there should be, it should be projectally. That is, you should be realistic and honest about yourself. Ask yourself, why am I dating this person? Why do, you want, why do I want to go I know this person. Is, is it that I want to understand her emotions or his emotions, what he likes and what he doesn't like, and see whether we can cope all. By the end of it, are you projecting on in the final way to have sex with him or her, which is wrong. As therefore, you must have an honest intention and a realistic intention if you are a Christian. And number two, stick tomorrow rules. Rule number one is a golden rule as a Christian. That is to love the Lord God, your God, with all your heart, soul, and mind. And when you do this, whatever you do, it is going to go in line and to fall in line with what God expects from your dating. Uh, on your date, when you're out there with your, with your friend, on this date, watch out for red signals or red lights and green light. They are there in a relationship. When you are when you're observant and you see some red lights, you will know when to apply the brakes or even when to stop and even get out of the relationship. And when maybe you see some green lights, you know, do I cultivate this relationship further? So let's see, what are some of the green lights that you should uh, be observant about? A green light in a, in, in a relationship, uh, it is when there is mutual interest, mutual thinking about one another, and mutual in, uh, initiative from both sides to drive the relationship forward. If you find there is this between the two, that a green light. Another green light is there should be recipro uh, reciprocity. Reciprocity. That is uh, what I do. I do good, the other person should do. We should all be cultivating this. Not only one person who is doing all the talking, all the texting, uh, all saying all the nice things, the other person is just passive. That is a red light. Then you find that um, if there should be there should be, a, it's a two-way, it's a two-way relationship and then you will be able to know exactly is this a right relationship I follow on or not? Do I go to the next date or not? Um, what about a red light? What are the red lights that we should be observant about? If you are the only one person is, is the one who is just doing all the planning, doing all the texting, doing all the, um, all the talking and saying all the nice things, the other person, maybe you even, uh, you even text, do I, what do we do next time? Do we go out and do some, and do A, B, C, and somebody just maybe replies you with a two letter word, okay. That's a, red, that's a red signal. And number two, if you find that maybe you have texted somebody and it takes too long to reply, maybe a day or two passes and the person is 
not replying. And when you ask, he says, I was busy. That's another red light. Do I consider, do I go for the next day? Do I waste my time here? Another red light you should observe is once you go out for a date, when you come back to your home or to your place and you are alone, is it ask yourself, are you feeling emotionally stressed because of the relationship or what you have talked, what you have shared? Do you get more confused? Are you miserable? Do you feel miserable? And again, this date, did it take you, is it taking you further away from God or is it bringing you closer to God? If it is taking you further, making you fall further away from God, that's a red light and that will help you know do I continue with the next date or not let me now uh, briefly come on sex when you are out there for a date one thing and one area our bodies are screaming to us to disobey God so loudly it is in this area of sex and it is an area the devil looks like he is winning the battle among our young people but there is hope in christ one thing we should purpose is to remain true to christ in this sex crazed world and once you focus and you have the way you want god to help you he will help you we must purpose to remain pure it's natural sometimes when you're out there with a, somebody that maybe you like it's natural uh, the certain desires will arise. In a healthy dating, certain desires will arise. They are God-given, but once God has given them to you, it is you to manage them and remain pure until the end. So what do you do? How do we stay pure? Number one, keep your relation public. Do not meet, maybe in a seclusive place. Make the ne make maybe the park, the green grass, purpose that the green grass in the park will be your coach, will be your bed, will be your everything. And also purpose that the trees out there in the park will be your roof. You can do all your Netflixing there, you can do all your discussions there, you are of any topic when you're out there in the, in the, uh, in the park or in a public place. But the moment you allow to do this, it may be in a, in, a, in a room or in, a, in, a, in, a, in, in somebody's house, uh, that's a red light. You will find that uh, you are putting your relationship in danger. The Bible says in the book of Songs of Solomon, that is chapter 2 and verse 7, do not awaken or stop love until it pleases, until it is its time. Therefore remain pure by taking these precautions. The moment you allow your dating and your relationship become physical, you kill the progress of the, of the dating and of the relationship because you stunt the emotional discovery of the other person, emotional, uh, even spiritual, you, you are not able to discover this person any other time because you are now only focused on the physical relationship. So take care if you want uh, to keep the values of a Christian young person. Number two, have godly friends. Godly friends, let your relationship be known by godly friends. You cannot make it alone. It is a battle. You need God's help by prayer and reading his word. You also need the help of God's people. Sometimes when you like somebody, they say that love is blind. Eh? and you may not be seeing some spots on this person but a friend who you see and don't be the part kind of a person who is told a and b your friend was seen somewhere at 11 a.m at 11 p.m doing a b c and then you start telling your friend ah it's because you don't know him or her the way i know him that is why you are saying like that ah the bible says in the book of proverbs 12:15. A fool is wise in his own eyes, but a wise person takes counsel. Therefore, any time you, you, maybe you are your, your friends are telling something about your, your person, always listen. Put your, heart, your head in, but put your hand in your head and tell yourself, you fool, don't be a fool, be wise. Open your ears and listen. So, you need godly people in your uh, uh, in, your, in your world so that you are able to move on well in your relation. That's why you should become part of a church, part of a church family. Be so that you can be accountable to people who will help you grow. You don't just get advice from anybody. Get godly 
advice. Number three, master your imagination. We all know that our mind is the hotbed from where sin is, uh, where, from where sin is hatched. And therefore make sure that you don't trigger your, your imaginations with, um, uh, with, uh, with the stuff that is going to, 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 to dilute your imagination. So therefore keep off some magazines, some Netflix, uh, that is a uh, film that are going to trigger negative imaginations in your mind. Read the word of God, read positive books uh, and uh, our magazines, or even uh, read stuff in the net that is going to, uh, to, uh, to make you grow positively. Number four, avoid putting yourself in temptation. We always pray. Jesus Christ taught us to pray in, in our Lord's prayer. Do not put us into temptation. You cannot be praying this and then you walk yourself straight into a temptation and then you start, tell, you start praying, God, keep me from evil. So do avoid putting yourself in tempting situations like what we have talked about. And also dress modestly. Modesty is good for you and good for the other person. And therefore that one will help you keep your relationship healthy even as you move on. Number five, pray. We have said pray. It is a spiritual battle. Purity is a spiritual battle. Remember we have said in the beginning that if there is an area in our age that the devil seems to be winning, it is this area of sex. May a cross board and one has to purpose that I will remain pure, whether I'm in marriage, whether I'm, I, I'm single, I will remain so until Christ comes. So pray. In the book of 2 Timothy 2.22, uh, Paul was saying, free also youthful lust, pursue righteousness, pursue love, pursue what is good. And therefore, it is purposeful for you to do that. We number six, eh? always remember, you can't hide completely. Maybe you can think you are somewhere, you are hiding, you are in an ex exclusive place, your parents are not there, your pastor is not seeing you, or your friends are not with you. But always remember, you cannot be completely hidden. God is seeing you. And at the back of your mind when you know this, that you are accountable to God, you will always be responsible during your dating. Number seven, weld the axe. Jesus said in the book of Matthew, if your eye causes you to sin, go just out. If your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. Otherwise, eternity is at stake. Therefore, what I'm saying is, whatever in your life is making you sin, whatever, may it be magazine, may it be pornography, may it be friends, may it be peer pressure, uh, stop it, get out, walk out of such things so that you can see eternity together with Christ. Talk about sex. Be accountable. Talk it as, as we are doing here, as a topic with people who can help, even with your parents, with your teachers, with your friends who can help you. Let it not be like it's a taboo. If you talk about it, you will get help. Having said that, now, probably as I'm talking, you have fallen victim to this. Uh, you have fallen, remember, you are not alone. Uh, there are people who have also been tempted, even great men of God in the Bible like David. They fell into this trap, but what did they do? He went back to God with a broken and contrite spirit and heart, and he asked for forgiveness, and God forgave him. And uh, he never went back to it. And God in the final end called him a man after his own heart. You can become a man or woman after God's own heart if you repent and purpose never to go back to this kind of a life and purpose to remain pure. How I pray it's going to be so for somebody today in Jesus' name. In the book of 1 Corinthians 10, 13, the Bible says, no temptation has seized you except what is common to men. So you are not alone. There is forgiveness in the blood of Jesus. You can resist. Know also that you can resist and win this battle. Struggling is good. Continue struggling. Never give up. 
you could be, have been a victim, but continue resisting. You are able. First Corinthians chapter 10, 13b also tells us, God is faithful. He will never allow you to be tempted beyond what you can bear. And number 10, if you are tempted, God provides a way out. The same book of First Corinthians 10, 13c tells us, He will always provide a way out so that you can stand up and alert, so you can resist any other time. And finally, if you're falling the victim, there is forgiveness in the blood of Jesus. There is power, 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 wonder-working power in the blood of Jesus. Jesus died for our sins, even the, the very bad ones, even the ones that we are discussing today, the ones on sex. He, you are, there is forgiveness and you start living and purposing to live a, a straight life. And number two, remember that Jesus is coming back and when he comes back we shall give an account of our lives even our sexual life and once you know that from today purpose to live a pure life date light rightly in a manner that people are not going to doubt your christianity god bless you until we meet another time if you have not subscribed in this uh, in this uh, channel we continue to urge you to subscribe so that you can continue and even place the by uh, the bell down there so that you can always be updated when we post something in this channel it is for you so that you can get to heaven god bless you